Sukha and Boga, Bliss, Joy and Ecstasy, Feeling Good and Great Inside, Peace, Conflict-Free Inner Space, All are rooted in oneness, whether external or internal is established in oneness. The oneness which can continue to exist in you for a longer period, you call it with higher words like Ananda, Bliss, Paravasa, Bhava, Samadhi, all that. The oneness which your system is not able to retain or sustain. We call it sukha, pleasure, happiness. Fundamentally, they both are different in their expression and quantity and its influence over your system, but both are rooted in oneness. So if the oneness is generated in your consciousness or your consciousness is nurtured by oneness, understand, you nurturing your oneness is sadhana when you are consciousness. Nurturing your oneness is shakti. You, what you call as you, nurturing the oneness is spiritual practice. And that supreme oneness, nurturing what you call as you, is shakti avish. Power manifest. Any being need to be nurtured, nurtured with the real gift oneness. Understand? Love is a poor substitute for oneness. How money is the poor substitute for love? When you are a baby and parents can't spend time with you, they give you gift, candy, toy. Only when you grow up, you will understand money, candy, ties are poor substitute for love. Even time is a poor substitute for love. And love is a poor substitute for one. Real parents give love, real guru gives one. Parents give just attention and gifts are uncle and auntie, not parents. Understand? Friends and family giving Attention and gifts is okay. Even parents giving gifts is okay, but substituting gifts to their love is not okay. I'll define love. Love is the feeling you feel 
when you know what the other person holds you and how you hold him are in integrity how you hold him or her and how he holds you when these two are in integrity what you feel towards that person is called love when parents are able to bring that with you they are right parent with parents don't expect toys gifts expect love with guru don't even expect love only oneness i want to give you a very simple yogic technique always visualize yourself with a 25 head and 50 hands as mahasada shiva and breathe through all the 25 heads you don't know the power of this technique even if you practice as a technique even if you don't believe you are sada shiva or parama shiva mahasada shiva just do this as a technique visualize yourself with a 25 head and 50 hands and inhale and exhale through 25 heads so much samana will get into your system your intelligence will be intensely activated samana is intense prana if i roughly equate oxygen to samana sorry oxygen to prana i can roughly equate it it cannot be exactly equated because it is something more oxygen independently does not have life but prana independently has life just by the very existence prana can generate life it can give life even to a dead leaf from dead leaf the tree can happen if the prana exists if the leaf exists in the space of prana from dead leaf life can happen from on hair life can happen that is what virabhadra this parama shiva gives on jata and life happens still you are a superstitious scientific science practitioner understand this word superstitious science practitioner if you do not have an authentic scale and definition of proof of existence have a very superstitious superficial definition of proof of existence and go only with that you are called superstitious science practitioner still you are a superstitious science practitioner and go on claiming mahabharata is false and ramayana is false hindu history is mythology surely hindu history is not mythology the whole power manifestation science i am doing is only to establish hindu history is not mythology through the remote vision i'll prove sanjaya sa bhagavad gita happening and pen it pend it down personality of the integrity great beings like sanjaya personality built on integrity hey, even the so called demonic villain characters in mahabharata ramayana if you see the kind of a integrity and power of oh god yes mandodari may not have been ferocious mother might have missed bringing up her children in some understandings and cognitions and ideas but she was an amazing chest most integrated wife that is why even krishna could not save his beloveds from the curse of mandodari because the power 
of Mandodari's integrity. Nobody is able to stop. Understand? This kind of characters can never be imagined. Sorry, not Mandodari, Gandhari. Even Mandodari is extremely chaste. I replaced Ravana's wife. I mistook, sorry, I used the word Mandodari instead of Gandhari. Actually, the seven chaste women you are supposed to remember every morning. Mandodari, Gandhari are all one in that. That's why I just exchanged the word. Gandhari, Gandhari is chastity. Even Mandodari is chastity. Gandhari is chastity. This kind of characters can never be imagined. Calling Hindu history as a mythology is one of the worst crime done to the past of the humanity to deny the future of the humanity. Understand? Denying the past of the humanity is denying the future of the humanity. Denying the past glory of the humanity is equivalent to denying the future possibility of the humanity. I am talking for humanity, not even just for Hindus. I am talking for the whole humanity. Ahalya Draubadi Kantari Tara Mandodari Tata. There are some variances which says Ahalya Draubadi Kunti, but there are some says which Ahalya Draubadi Kantari. I'll personally agree with Ahalya Draubadi Kantari Mandodari Tata. I'm not disrespecting Kunti's greatness, but surely. When it comes to the integrity and chastity to the husband, I will put Gandhari a step ahead and more than Kundi. Kundi might have been a great mother, but I will say when it comes to the dimension of great wife, I will give Gandhari the place and respect. Understand? Son is your success. Husband is your relationship. Relationships need sacrifice. Success needs only vision. Surely sacrifices will be respected more than vision. Because sacrifice forms foundation for the vision. Gandhari is Sacrifice, Kundi may be vision. Without vision, sacrifice is blind. And without sacrifice, vision can be sometime instable. I don't want to say Kundi did not do sacrifice, but her vision was more alive in her than the sacrifice in Gantari, the sacrifice was more alive than the vision. But one thing I am very clear. Hindu history is surely neither legend nor mythology. It is history. History of the extraordinary enlightened civilization that existed. By power manifestation, the first thing I am establishing was Hindu history is real. Bringing legitimacy to Hindu history. Then bringing legitimacy to Hindu powerful principles and cognitions, darshana. A vast, glorious, enlightened civilization started by Paramashiva, envisioned and expanded and lived in 56 nations and 200 states and 1700 provinces and through 10,000 sampradayas. 
in all the 11 dimensions and 14 worlds cannot be completely denied denying it is surely superstitiousness the volume amount of the literature you want to deny the whole 20 million books as mythology novel imagination hey there's a level for fantasy imagination see if you have seen elephant with one trunk you can imagine an elephant with 20 trunk no problem but if you have not even seen elephant with one trunk one trunk how can you imagine so there is a level of information processing from truth to fact fact to fantasy fantasy to imagination imagination to delusion and delusion to crankiness craziness even all this has certain logic maybe illogical logic but there is a logic illogical logic the eccentric center center even the eccentricity has center so with any scale you cannot establish hindu history as mythology or imagination no if somebody can imagine to the scale of vyasa i will say is his space of imagination is much more intense and higher frequency than the reality you perceive or experience or exist the reality with which we are transacting interacting is surely lower frequency than the existence of vyasa who can imagine if it is imagination a one lakh couplets history book still unbroken record the world records created by hindu still unbroken i can say at least 10000 still exists world record created by hindus unbroken i'll make a website for it world records created by hindus still unchallenged unbroken first i'll say mahabharata still nobody nobody is able to compete 100000 couplet epic of the mahabharata the stature of mahabharata forget about breaking the record nobody is even able to challenge it nobody is even able to challenge it so be assured don't bother about this superstitious science practitioners parama shiva is real maha sada shiva with 25 face and 50 hands is real just visualize yourself and inhale and exhale then you will understand the air which goes to the fifth layer 25th head nostril and comes down will make you realize you are maha sada shiva this kind of breathing will make you realize every word i am uttering is true and it will become reality in you you will start living enlightenment understand living enlightenment is not a struggle now i want to tell you for living enlightenment you need vision not sacrifice as long as you don't get the right vision you need to have sacrifice till the vision is not clicked you need sacrifice once the vision clicks you don't need sacrifice 
and i cut my thigh and went back to annamalai swamigal he said what you did is neither wrong nor right i couldn't understand what do you mean he said because of this cutting yourself you got the click ultimately that you are not the body actually after that only he gave me the initiation into that aham spurana the methodology of the aham spurana by great incarnation ramana maharishi it was transmitted to me by annamalai swamigal so ramana maharishi is my parama guru and annamalai swamigal transmitted that aham spurana anubhava into me and which became reality when i was 12 when the avalakundru after that once annamalai swamigal was telling me now understand the thing you did cutting your thighs neither right nor wrong because you got the vision you don't need sacrifice you don't need to cut yourself again if annamalai swamigal said cutting yourself is right i would have been continuously doing that everywhere and all of you will be sitting and cutting yourself it is not <laughs> right same way it is not wrong you need certain kind of a ferociousness to do sacrifice till the vision clicks that kind of a ferociousness is required for the vision to click so because the ferociousness is required for the vision to click the experimenting on yourself cutting yourself your thigh was not wrong because it is not required regularly once the vision clicks it is not right understand it properly sacrifice is required only till the vision clicks once the vision clicks you don't need sacrifice because living enlightenment does not need sacrifice it only needs the vision clicking in you but till the vision clicks you need to have the patience and perseverance will persistent for that you need sacrifice shivagnana anubhuti shivagnana anubhava parama shivagnana anubhuti is a vision manifest not archer for suffering i have always seen in kailas also some of these brahmacharinis and brahmacharis who are very ready to sacrifice till the vision clicks ready to be having that will persistence and ready to sacrifice they always win the game but these guys who always have that one leg outside oh if it is okay i will stay otherwise i'll go back and i will go to home for a few days because i am feeling suffocated and i am feeling bur bur jir jir gur gur gun 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 jin 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 mm understand having the nerves to stand till the vision clicks is needed to manifest powers when the vision clicks see when the vision clicks it will manifest as powers that time you need a very strong nervous system which was prepared with a will persistence and tapas why paramashiva says till the age of 21 do not have physical relationship understand in hinduism marriage was conducted before puberty and the engagement means ensuring he is your husband he is your wife was done before physical maturity but 
Consummation happened always after 21. Many kids married and then sent to Gurukul. The boy knows his wife is there. But he will study in Gurukul only after 21 he will even meet the wife. Even in Ramayana, after marriage, Rama spends time with Vishwamitra and Arjuna goes for tapas after marriage. So understand, marriage is different, consummating the marriage is different. Why Paramashiva says till 21 do not have physical relationship? Because after physical relationship you are going to give birth to a baby. For that you need a system which is very healthy and baby to be healthy. Having physical relationship is nothing to do with just between two. Please understand. The whole society is involved in your physical relationship. If your sex is protected, is not going to produce kids, then only you both are involved. Nobody else is involved. But if it is unprotected sex, the whole society is involved. So society has a right to get involved into it. Understand this dimension. All of us think, oh, why? Anybody else has a right to what I do with my body and my privacy? Yes, as long as it is protected and you are not going to produce the side effect and after effect of your sex, yes, it's only up to you. Nobody has a right to say anything about it. It's between you and your spouse or your partner or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever with whom you are having. But when you are going to produce a side effect, naturally the other person need to be involved. If you are going to have a physical relationship and it is going to have the side effect of after effect of pregnancy, you need a system which can deliver a healthy baby. Understand the same way you need a nervous system which is healthy for power manifestation. Once the vision clicks, vision Vision clicking in you is the cosmic union with Paramashiva. Once that happens, you are going to deliver powers. For that you need a strong nervous system. Which does not get shaken by the society's fear and greed. You, please understand, I have always seen a Brahmachari or Brahmacharini and Sannyasi who has a strong nervous system to put up with any pressure till the vision clicks that will persistence. A person of that strength and tapas and caliber when the vision clicks in him and the power manifests he has a very strong nervous system to manifest it as Paramashivatva. Otherwise when they don't have the stamina to stand with the tapas, they hit some one or two small, small understandings or idea and radiate their depression as a philosophy. I want to tell all of you, many of my disciples have really had the vision click that Paramashiva Jnana and manifesting powers and enlightenment experience, but they are all with me within the Sangha with the deep gratitude, radiating, loving, living around me. I also wanted to make it very clear. Some people watch my satsang or read something here and there or even come as Adinavasi or Sanyasi for some time and get some ideas and understandings. They try to go out and then try to establish themselves as enlightened, all these, that, and try to encash these ideas, commercialize these ideas for their 
personal interests and vested interests like money or name and fame or whatever attention need or whatever whatever their purpose vested interest it's up to them i don't know please be very clear i wanted the whole world to know anything i am offering to the world is functional and useful and complete only in the ecosystem i have created all the teachings power manifestation initiation everything i am sharing with the world is functional useful safe for any practitioner within the ecosystem i created outside this ecosystem person who tries to lead and person who tries to follow both are in danger be very clear don't destroy yourself neither by trying to lead nor trying to be following the ecosystem sangha guru linga sangha all the three together is the enlightenment ecosystem i am creating kailasa i am manifesting so all the three components are fundamental requirement for anything i am offering to the world for it to work and functional useful so here by i wanted to inform all my disciples to be part of this guru linga sangha guru is nityananda paramashivam linga is all the temples i established and sangha is the kailasa i have manifested and manifesting all these three put together is the ecosystem enlightenment ecosystem i am creating i am manifesting this is the fundamental requirement for anything i am offering it to be useful for you understand some people try to claim oh if we declare we are enlightened what is there we will do why they should bother understand as long as your sex is protected it is between you consensuous individuals when it is unprotected and producing the other side effects society has a right to interfere as long as you don't touch my disciples and initiated by me as long as you don't involve and intervene with their life i will not be interfering it's up to you when you try to intervene interfere confuse my disciples and anybody initiated by me i have to protect my disciples it is my responsibility thoroughly getting grounded into the shastras having a strong nervous system to manifest powers when the vision clicks when the cosmic union with parama shiva happens and manifests as powers that's the most powerful way of existing for that you need a strong nervous system this breathing as parama shiva will create that strong nervous system in you and make you manifest the vision and powers of parama shiva do it let's do it viti nisheda if you want to control people constantly say do's and don'ts if you want to liberate people say don'ts and do's with the don'ts and do's there is no gray area with the do's and don'ts there is a lot of gray area gray area is the way rulers exploit you with the don'ts and do's there is no gray area with the do's and don'ts there is always a gray area so i'll continue to expand on the ecosystem of the kailasa 
enlightened civilization of the Kailasa and radiating living enlightenment. So with this, I bless you all. Let's all radiate with integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching, causing, living, Shuddhatvaita Saivam, Paramashivoham, the eternal bliss, Nityananda. Thank you. Be blissful.